Hi, this is Doug Bear with Splunk. I've got to tell you, the Big Data Beard Podcast, with a name like that, how could you not listen? You are now listening to the Big Data Beard. This is our podcast where we explore the trends, technology, and talented people making big data a big deal. Well, we are at SpunkCop 2018 in Orlando, Florida, and we are pleased to have the star of Day 2 Keynote, Seema Haji on, leading the IoT product marketing team. Seema, welcome to the show. Thank you. This is my first time. I'm super excited. It is. It's a, we, we like to get new guests on because our, our listeners like to find out all the new good stuff. So today, there were some really exciting announcements because Splunk clearly has been a super use case focused company. And one of the emerging use cases and hottest trends in IT today is IoT. Mm -hmm. So give me a little bit of background on your role, what you're doing in the IoT space, and let's talk about some of the big announcements today. Oh, absolutely. So I've been at Splunk a year and a half. Okay. Uh, this so you know is, everything by now, right? I know everything by now. I knew it four weeks in. Um, this is officially my second dot .conf. Okay, excellent. And uh, I was just super excited to be here to launch Splunk's first IoT product, as you heard at the keynote today. Um, you know, we've just had so much innovation here. It's been a flurry and almost hard to keep up with, you know, the introduction of business flow and natural language and some of the advances in machine learning. Um, and, you know, when I started at Splunk a year and a half ago, my goal was to come here from my background at being at various startups and launch and help launch a first IoT product. And thankfully, we just have a fantastic set of product managers and specialists driving the product and the technology behind IoT. Very cool. So, IoT feels like a really natural fit for Splunk. Knowing what the Splunk platform is, its capability and focus on machine data feels like a very natural fit. Why is this the first IoT product? It feels like it's been that's been a use case we've talked about. It's the first official product. Tell us what that means to be the first official product and what its aim is to do. Absolutely. So you touched on it. You said the word natural. And the truth is IoT has been very organic here at Splunk. So even though today may have been our first formal product or SKU or announcement, customers, Splunk customers have been solving for IoT for several years. Um, and that's how, you know, when we think about Doug touched on this yesterday. Uh, we're trying to make data accessible to even more users. Uh, we're trying to get users the ability to work the way the data works, right? So what we're doing here is, you know, when you think about IoT, you think about industrial operations. How do we make this process seamless? How do we let process engineers or shop floor engineers use IoT? Yeah. And that's how we actually built a product for this market. So. You know, the best way to think about it is customers can do this with Splunk Enterprise, mm -hmm. but just as we did with IT service intelligence and Splunk Enterprise Security, now we're creating an easy way for process engineers, the guys on the factory floor, mm -hmm. to get started with IoT. So in order to be successful in IoT, what I what I find is there's oftentimes people want to boil the ocean, right? There's this there's this oh there's this massive sensors, there's all this stuff we can do. But sometimes it's hard to focus in. So how is Splunk helping organizations focus in on that, that outcome that you're trying to drive with IoT? So IoT is very vast. There is the consumer side of things, and then there is the data analytics, the industrial operation side of things. Yeah. Um, our first area of focus is really around industrial. So as you heard today, you know, we're entering the industrial market. Um, these we were at Hanover Messe. It's an event, a huge industrial event in April. And it's just mind blowing sometimes at the disparity in the advances in automation in manufacturing mm -hmm. and the way that they're doing data analytics. Absolutely. You know, OT, you know, industrial customers in their OT environments, they're actually, believe it or not, using a majority of them, Excel. Really? Today. They're, okay. yeah, it, and That's it's just, surprising. And it's it's actually, you know, I'm gonna say 60, 70 percent of them, and the spectrum's vast. Oh yeah. Even in speaking with all the analysts, they they tell us the same thing. So yeah. these are guys that are downloading data from the industrial systems and then thinking about it and looking at data analytics after the fact. Yeah. So they're looking a week ago, two weeks ago, a month ago. So our value, like when you say focus, it's let's start with manufacturing. Let's start with transportation. Um, these are the guys that are ready to invest. They're ready to take advantage of real-time insights. They want things like predictive maintenance. So let's enter that market and give them a way to do this. 
So it feels like the time is there. There's a lot of there's a lot of industry movements going on exactly that make this like a really prime time exactly. to do that. What are, what are those macro things that are happening across the industry that you think are like the driving force on why it's now's the time? So Marvin touched on, um, you know, my co-presenter this mm -hmm. morning, he touched on Industry 4.0. Mm -hmm. And I think it really comes down to the best analogy that I have is um, our car, right? Uh, the way we take care and maintain our car. So every three months we go in for an oil change and we say, oh, either three months or 3,000 miles, I need to bring my car in right. and I need to get the oil changed. Mm -hmm. That's your very classic case of preventative maintenance. Correct. I'm going to prevent my car from breaking down on the freeway. Right. The next stage is condition-based maintenance. The alert goes off in my car saying, hey, Seema, it's time for an oil change. Bring your car in. So the biggest trend driving this is the next stage of that, which is predictive maintenance. Mm -hmm. So how do I use things like machine learning and AI to not wait for that signal to go off in the car, not wait for that reminder in my Google calendar to say, bring your car in, but I can actually predict that, hey, my car is going to need maintenance and then use things like AI and machine learning, which is the next ideal place for us to be, to say, not just say, bring your car in, but also predict what piece in your car needs that maintenance or that little bit of TLC. So I think predictive maintenance is a big trend. Uh, the second is the convergence of IT and OT. So traditionally, you know, IT departments, security departments, OT departments, they kind of existed in silos. Mm -hmm. They're now coming together. Okay. They now want to share data. And I think the third piece is security. So traditionally, industrial OT environments have been secure by brick walls, right? right? We're going to protect physical, everything that's yeah. physical security. Mm -hmm. um, and now with all of the advances, we're all connected it's security is becoming a legitimate risk. So I think it's the three that are really driving us to where we need to be. Interesting. So when I think about IoT, I think about you, you've got these you know, thousands, millions of devices at the edge yeah. that are sending data back. Mm -hmm. And if I want to do something with it, it's challenging. That's what you're, I think you're after with Splunk is that you're going to make it easier to get all that data in to do something with it. But that's not human scale data. So talk to me about why AI and machine learning is such a critical component of IoT and how your interactions and your integrations into some of the open source technologies mm -hmm. is such a critical component for customer success? I think it really comes down to um, speed. Mm -hmm. It comes down to how can you get up and running even quicker? Um, how do you actually predict meaningful outcomes? So take machine learning as an example, right? Um, if you talk to customers and all of the customers I speak to, the analyst, there is a, there's some sort of a similarity in hearing what they say, which is it's really difficult to test how machine learning is going to work before you put it into production. Right. Uh, also, there is um, how do you translate what the business needs to what's happening in the technology, which mm -hmm. is your machine learning and For AI, sure. right? So we're Splunk, I think our value is in trying to make this absolutely seamless mm -hmm. for the end user. Right. So how do we give them the ability to do and, and get some of these meaningful, out, out, meaningful outcomes, test it, and then learn with that and incorporate it? For IoT specifically, mm -hmm. I think machine learning is all of the customers speak about it. The users we speak to, they have interest in it. Right. They don't quite know what it is still. Yep. Um, and they are still learning to differentiate between machine learning and AI. Yep. And they're still trying to draw that correlation between machine learning and predictive maintenance, which I just described. Yeah, predictive maintenance is one of those. I, I love the idea of it, but it feels like it's one of those that if businesses do it well, it's like that law of large numbers where if you have a small impact on you know, keeping a multi-million dollar production line up and running, you have a small increase in efficiencies that has to be able to translate to large downstream like outcomes, right? Ab absolutely. So we have um, a customer, DB Cargo, Deutsche Bahn, and they're Europe's largest rail freight operator. Okay. They're using Splunk to do predictive maintenance on their railroad locomotives. Okay. So think about the driver driving the locomotive, mm -hmm. the operator that's sitting, you know, thousands of miles away, they're seeing the same view of the health of the locomotive. Yep. And then they're predicting when that's going to need maintenance. Right. That's your classic predictive maintenance 
maintenance use case. Yeah. And then the driver gets an alert saying, hey, you need to take this off the rails for a little while because yeah. you need to bring it in the shop. It translated millions of dollars for them mm -hmm. compared to when a locomotive's going to break down. Yeah. You know, so it's it's absolutely huge. So from an industry perspective, it, like that's a that's a capital asset intensive industry like that, that organization at the way they create value is by using large amounts of capital or capital intensive products right. to translate into customer value. That's their revenue stream. Mm -hmm. Besides transportation and industrial manufacturing, what are some of the next industries you think are going to be most relevantly transformed by IoT and what your team is trying to accomplish? When we talk about industrial, um, I think the verticals, if you will, that are absolutely ripe and ready are manufacturing, transportation, oil and gas. Okay. We're seeing a lot of traction in energy and utilities, okay. and we're seeing a lot of traction in public sector, so government, yeah. right? So I think those are going to be areas of focus for us in, in the future. Mm -hmm. And then on the consumer side of IoT, I don't know what the future holds. Yeah, no it'll, kidding, be, right? it'll be, yeah, <laughs> check back with me next year. So we also got to see a, a an augmented reality demo yeah. that it felt very much aligned to this industrial manufacturing concept where I can send a, a technician out into the floor right. using this mobile application, actually start to overlay metrics yeah. into that. How is, how is augmented reality, AI machine learning, IoT, how is this all connected? Like, help me understand what that really means for Splunk. So let me try to describe a scenario to you. And okay. you, you kick that off, but you have somebody in the field yeah. that's going to test, um, let's say, you know, like an energy meter, right? Mm -hmm. He's using his augmented reality tool yep. that's actually saying, hey, this meter is faulty. There's something wrong with it. Right. But he's getting that data. And this is a legit Splunk use case, by the way. I can't name the customer. But they're feeding data back in the Splunk and they can actually identify what that meter is mm -hmm. and provide live information mm -hmm. um, saying, hey, you know what? This is how you actually fix and address that meter. Oh, right? okay. That's cool. And it's, it's super cool. Then think about it from the plant floor operations when something's broken. I can actually now look at my industrial machinery, maybe scan a barcode like we showed you in the demo mm -hmm. and say, this is a piece of equipment. How does it fail? When is it going to be predict? When can I predict it's going to fail? Right. And how do I maybe use machine learning to predict what impact it's going to have on the production output, mm -hmm. the quality of my production line, and how can I best prepare for that? Yeah. So IoT, big, big focus. I'm curious what you're seeing personally and what your team's going to be focusing on when you think about the next six to 12 months. What are the, what are the big rocks you're hoping to chat, you know, you're hoping to tackle with your team and the, the outcomes you're going to be trying to drive with your customers? So we've been over the past couple of years building a strong ecosystem of IoT partners that have the domain expertise to help us bring this to market. Mm -hmm. Now that we've G8, now that we're here, mm -hmm. um, our goal is to continue to drive awareness, both with existing Splunk customers, mm -hmm. uh, go after net new accounts in industrial companies yep. and you know grow the space make some money very cool so i want to shift gears we've had a fun conversation about what splunk is doing in the iot practice bring your first iot product to market one's a very natural use case and fit and we love that but i want to switch gears to rapid fire we'll get okay. to know you a little personal we did do a little bit of trolling on you on twitter and linkedin and we found out self-proclaimed you're into whiskey cooking and hiking mm-hmm that's like my three favorite things. Is that is that right? Whiskey, what kind? Uh, bourbons, scotches, what are you into? Scotches, single malt. Scotches. Okay. I have a bottle of Oban upstairs in my room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. All right, cooking, what, what, what's your favorite kind of cooking? You know, I grew up cooking Indian food, but living here in the U.S. and California for uh, 20 years, I can make a mean Irish stew. Oh, okay, excellent. I can do a really good roast chicken with a Mediterranean couscous twist on it. Ooh, that sounds pretty And awesome. I can make a pretty good Indian chicken curry. Have you gotten into sous vide cooking yet? Not yet. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna we're gonna have to work on that. All right, so rapid fire questions, the actual ones we're going to talk about. Okay. These are fun. Don't worry about them. Just say the first thing that comes to mind. You don't have to spend too much lifetime laboring. What year do you think Skynet will go online? 2020. 2020. All right, that's pretty close. That worries me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, uh, what's the last great book you read that you'd recommend to us? Oh, you know, I'm trying to... Um... Ethics of Our Fathers. It's a okay. book by Rabbi Hillel. Okay. And it talks about us as individuals mm -hmm. as part of the society that we're at and yeah. what the role that we play. Brilliant. Okay. And what genre of music are you currently rocking? I'm an old fashioned alternative rock person. Yeah. No, I respect that. That makes sense. What piece of technology is making your life worse? 
I think social media. Yeah. <laughs> and just look at you. You were trolling me. Oh, no, that's, I that's how we made your life better by being it, there. Let's be honest. It's um, <laughs> If I'm honest, it... Uh, it makes me a little sad when I drive to work every day and I see people everywhere. They're just buried in their phones. Nobody says hello to each other. Yeah. Um, we're missing sort of the old fashioned style of conversation. So we're more if connected I could, and less connected I just than like, ever, right? Yeah, I just yeah. reverse that a little bit. What is your uh, personal biggest money pit right now? Money pit. Ooh, I just bought a Mercedes. Did you? A, Good a week for ago. You. I did. You're in the cars too now. I we're... did. Don't tell BMW that I was on stage with you. Oh, that's, right. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a good choice. All right. Are you going anywhere really interesting soon? I am going to Barcelona for Ooh. IoT World Congress. One of my favorite cities. Uh, in in a week and a half, we're straight from Conf, and then I'm actually going back home to India for four weeks. Which what I'm city really in India? Excited. Say, uh, what city in India? Pune, close to Bombay. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, what TV show are you currently binging on? Oh, my goodness. This is going to put me uh, Borgia on uh, Showtime. Really? All yeah. right. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Well, we can find you on social media. You're on Twitter and on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. I'm more active, I think, on LinkedIn. I need to like pick up a little bit of my That's Twitter after conf. Well, it was very nice to have you on Likewise. the show today. I hope you'll be come back on again. Maybe next year we'll hear what's I'd love next that. for IoT. Absolutely. Nice right, meeting thank you. you Seema. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Big Data Beard Podcast. It would also be pretty cool if you reviewed us in your favorite podcast app. It really does help. Thanks for listening.